recording. We're recording. We're recording. Hi, welcome back to this. <laughs> hey, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is going to be the first in a series that I've talked about wanting to do. It's going to be, um, I'm not going to say any schedule yet. I just think Tabletop Tuesdays is a good alliteration, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what is it going to be? It's going to be me doing makeup and talking about Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it is fifth edition and I haven't played any of the other ones. I'm not old school and I won't claim to be. I have done a couple of other videos. If you, you want to check those out, uh, one of them is talking about the first character I ever had kind of a ramble and a definite rambling one is the second video I did and it was uh talking about all sorts of stuff what I want to do is kind of maybe colors and things inspired by the cover of the player's handbook so I'm going to do some oranges and some reds and some browns probably kind of looking like the same shit I always do I want to do maybe maybe try something crazy like a double cut crease. So this might not even go out because if it's horrible, I'm not gonna release it. So there. Oh honey, oh honey, oh, honey. oh honey, oh honey. So yeah, if you have never played Dungeons and Dragons, this is the fifth edition player's handbook and this is pretty much all you need to make a character and how the rules work on how to uh, roll your dice and how to do combat and all sorts of stuff is all in here and anything you do story-wise uh, if you're going to be the game master or the dungeon master is up to you but really all you need is this you don't need the dungeon master's guide there's a lot of good resources and things in that but this is it this is it and if you're a player and you think, oh my god, I've got to read all of that to play. There's only a few sections that you're going to need to read. There's stuff, because huge sections of these, this, and there's a whole chapter here. If you, if you don't want to play spells, there's a whole chapter nugget here. You don't have to read. But all this is how to build a character. And you're only going to need a few pages out of here for each thing that you choose. If you want to be an elf, you've got like four pages. If you want to be a fighter, you've got four, a couple of pages on that, on how to be a fighter. And then there's the basics on how to play, and especially how I learned, for the most part, was playing as you go. And there's a lot of videos, if, if you're con um, confused or anything like that, on how to play. I'll just open it and let you see this table of contents. And again, this is just showing the different, see there's, there's di pages for your different classes, and your different people, and um, a lot of stuff that if if you're not so inclined is not going to have anything really to do with you. Now, if you're a dungeon master or DM, we're going to go with that from now on, you do need to know the basics. You don't need to know the basics of every spell, uh, especially going off. A lot of this stuff will just get stuck in your head as you go. All you have to know is like the basics on on um, the mechanics, of how, how a thing works, and then more often than not, characters, the, you as a player are your responsible for your spells and knowing your stuff and you don't have to know it all at once you can have um, the book you can have there's plenty of apps for your phone and things like that where you can just look up these resources as and when you need them to see what you need to do and what will work for you and again a lot of times even when I'm playing and I've played I've only played for a few years but even when I've been running a game I'll say someone will say a spell that they want to do or a maneuver or something like that and I'll have them explain to me what the rules of that are. And then I go off of my knowledge uh, and my experience and uh, make a decision from there. If there's any problems with that, you usually take that up later uh, after the game. Or sometimes, you know, you're, you're kind of unclear or you just make like a fly decision. You can always go back and look after. But for the most part, this is it. That's all you need to know. So again, today is just going to be basics. I'm just, I'm not going to go into anything in de great detail or I'm going to try not to ramble into that because I tend to do that uh, like the whole thing I just went into. I'll give you a basic rundown of your options in each category. So many ways to customize and build a character the way that you want to build it and this again is only the player's handbook. There are tons and tons and tons of other books and other resources. There are 
homemade homebrew classes and races and there's also a bunch of books um, that have been released and supplements that have been released that have extra stats and um, descriptions and things of more mostly subclasses and races and sub races and things that you can choose from. I'm not going to get too much into what I am going to be wearing. I'm just going to do it as I talk because it's easier for me to do something with my hands <laughs> as I go along. If you're interested in anything that I do use, on my face it's going to be linked in the description down below we're just gonna go through like we are setting up um, a new character and how it says to do it in the book if you are interested and if you do pick up this particular book again there are quick instructions that you can find online there are so many other things you don't have to pick this up but it is a really great resource and I find myself going to it all the time even as a DM so once you've used it enough it's really super easy to navigate to and um, if you do pick it up there is a, like a mock walkthrough with everything it tells you where you should put your because uh, it's, it's all points based to get your stats and everything so um, there's suggestions on where you should put your your stats and there's different ways of coming about those but we'll talk about that in another video so Looking at the book, the first thing you're going to want to figure out is the race of your characters, and now that means dwarves, elves, humans, whatever. And all of these races are going to have different benefits and different drawbacks depending on what you pick. So if you're looking for the uh, best build, if you're um, really into strategizing the numbers, there's definitely a way to do that. The races you can choose from are dwarf, elf, halfling, human, dragonborn, gnome, half-elf, half-orc, and tiefling. Each of these have a page or two backstory, some lore, some name suggestions, some of your basic stats right here, and then they also have subclasses. For elf, for example, we've got high elf, wood elf, and dark elf, or drow. All of them have extra stats, as you can see here and here, and they do um, specific things. Most of the races have these sub-races, and they have uh, advantages and drawbacks, but a lot of the advantages and um, the differences you get with these subclasses are that some are more intelligent, they are able to use different kinds of weapons and different things like that. I'm gonna start to look like a clown now, just so you know. So next, we have classes. Classes are what are going to determine what you can use for weapons, what your your main abilities are, if you can use magic or not. Uh, this is going to be like the meat and potatoes of what you want to pick, depending on your play style. Your choices are barbarian, bard, cleric, druid, fighter, monk, paladin, ranger, rogue, sorcerer, warlock and wizard so all of them have different varying degrees of difficulty uh once you get into them if you're just wanting to go in and be a hack and slash type of person a barbarian or a fighter a good choice for you with barbarian you get rages where you can do extra damage with a fighter depending on which one you're either more likely to get a critical hit or you have maneuvers where you can parry and dodge and kind of um, control the the battle a little bit better. Also with fighter, you can um, there's call, an, called an Eldridge Knight uh, where you can have a, a few spells. Uh, if you want to play someone who's an entertainer, and that doesn't mean you have to sit there and you have to entertain everybody all the time and be funny or sing or or play an instrument or anything like that. A bard they can they can do poetry. If you're if you're dungeon master all out, maybe uh, you can be mine. I know there's some spells that take uh, verbal components, but I'm sure that they could work with you to figure out a way around that if that's so what you choose. Um, there's so many different ways to do it. It's what uh, is going to work best for you and what you're going to find fun in. And because that's the most number one, anyone will say that, the number one most important thing to do is have fun.
every year. So, I did another layer. I'm not sure about it so far. It's a lot. I've never done this much. Moving on um, chronologically through the book, um, you get into, it's uh, going to be getting into your personality and like uh, this is where you're going to pick the languages and the personality traits of your character. Now for myself, I usually keep this open because I like to figure out my character's personality as I go. I get a rough idea of what I want, and then as I go, I figure out what's gonna work be works best for me. This has a lot to do with alignment too. If you're gonna be a good character, you're gonna be a bad character, which would be good and evil, and then you've got your neutrals in between and subsections of all of those. This section, you're also going to get which languages, and there's so many different languages. We'll get into that in another video. You get to have proficiencies in certain languages, for your race and then you also which if we get to the next section is going to be your background backgrounds are where you came from what kind of training or life you had before you became an adventurer there's ways to do a custom one but there are a ton and by a ton i mean a ton of different um, ones as you can see in the book there are pages and pages and pages of these different these different backgrounds you can be a criminal you could have been an entertain we've got entertainers we've got if you used to be a soldier if you used to be um, if you're a nomad or um, which they call they call it um, an outlander uh, if you're used to being on your own or being growing up you know in the wilderness and these they give you extra languages extra uh, equipment and things like instruments that you can use or different skills that you get to add your extra points into you when you roll for them say you're more perceptive or you're better at history or things like that this really comes into play then and these will add to your scores later the next chapter you get into is equipment and this is after you've gone through all your other stuff and it tells you what you can choose um and what your this is where you find out all the stats how much all this stuff costs lists of different if you if you can play an instrument or you have a game like you're good at a game or something like that there's all listed in there things you can buy from merchants and all that kind of good stuff the next section you get into what um how you can multi-class and things called feats feats are um as you level up you you have access to these things called feats and these are the abilities that you can bring on to more customize your play style, making you uh, more alert, an expert in certain types of weapons or certain types of armor that you weren't necessarily allowed to use at the beginning. These allow you to do that, have extra spells, be you know a better forager or things like that uh, to help you bring your character together more. Some of these do require you to have certain prerequisites to have them. Now your next chapter is going to tell you about your ability scores, how you use them, how you use them in combat, um, how uh, generally how spells work and fighting works and all, all those things you really need to take all of this, all the stuff you have and put them into the game. It's good to have a basic understanding, but this is what these resources are for. Um, as long as you're not slowing down the game for other people, go ahead and look it up. If it's between your turn, look up what you need to look up and always, here's the thing, always be ready for your turn and then you've got your next chapter and this is going to be a chapter that is specifically going to be important to people who can cast spells because it's spell casting it tells you more about how spells work targeted spells area of effect spells and it actually goes into long old list of spells which spell list is available for uh, the different characters and then it has the actual descriptions of the spells uh what they do and what you need to do them. Now I'm gonna finish up this look uh, and I'll be back. All right, this, this is the finished look. I, I hate it. I hate it. I tried something new. 
and it was awful. So if I do post this, I'm gonna um, <laughs> say it's clown makeup. It's clown makeup. I wanted to do so success. Oh my lanta. So that's the basics of the book. If you watched this far, thank you for watching. I'm sorry the payoff on my face wasn't amazing. <laughs> a lot of experimental stuff, a lot of things that I wanted to try out, um, and then I started to rush. Um, obligatory montage. All right, and that is the end of the video. Again, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this. I look like a fucking clown. I learned things. It's a learning experience for everyone. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.